All right, great. Thanks, Sue. Uh, as uh, Sue mentioned, my name is Andy Petrosky. My official role at the university is Director and Assistant Professor of Learning Technologies, and uh, my contact information is on screen there, including my Twitter handle and my uh, email address. And I will have to apologize um, to everyone in advance. Of course, within the last 12 hours, I've started to have the most severe allergy attack I've ever had in my life and, and sinus attack. So I think things are all right right now, but if I have to um, take a short break, I'll, I'll do that and try not to interrupt the, the webinar too, uh, too, too much. So in my role, I have about um, overall have about 17 years of instructional design and development experience, including work in serious games, but really a broad spectrum of experience in instructional technology and multimedia development. Uh, here at Harrisburg University for the last six years, I've been uh, focused on three primary roles. One is uh, coordinating and teaching in the Learning Technologies Master of Science program. And in that Master of Science program, that is where the serious games uh, and simulations concentration is and the courses and curriculum that we'll talk about today. Uh, and then we also have other um, one-off courses that are a little bit more focused on uh, some other areas of serious games, specifically teachers using games, uh, already developed games or off-the-shelf games or entertainment games uh, in the classroom. Uh, so the courses we'll talk about today are a little bit different than that. I also work with our faculty here at uh, Harrisburg University uh, to help them integrate technology into the courses, and sometimes that does include a game or simulation uh, solution or experience for the students. And then finally, I work in our Center for Advanced Entertainment and Learning Technologies. And this is a center uh, for faculty work and student experiences. Again, it's kind of a, cons it's a consulting arm of the university for the most part. And we do projects there that are funded through a variety of means, including um, grants, uh, direct hire projects, and um, partnership projects as well. So um, that's a little bit of my background in, uh, or my background and what I'm focusing on now. Uh, and some of that related to serious games and simulations. Uh, and my background and focus in serious games has really been uh, primarily from a corporate learning perspective, both in my um, 17 years of experience as an instructional technologist and then in the time that I've been here at uh, Harrisburg University. Although, again, we do work in educational games um, as part of the Learning Technologies Master of Science program and also as part of the center. So before we get started, that's a little bit about me, and I know Avi has shared um, that uh, um, the role that uh, is played um, is instructional designer. And so for Alexandria, Ian, uh, Magda, and Mark, if you can type in the text chat and kind of let us know if you can let us know what role you play in in your organization as related to serious games. So are you are instructional designer, are you a professor, are you a student? And um, you guys can type that in the text chat while I uh, while I continue, and I'll I'll look for that and make sure that I direct uh, what I'm talking about and some of the examples or or some of the explanation towards those uh, those areas. So thanks, Ian. Ian's a web developer. Alexandria is a curriculum developer, instructional designer. Magda is a professor, uh, teaches an online game course and started the computer game science program at UC Irvine. She Great. will be a speaker this summer, too. Excellent. Okay, thank you, guys. Um, so this is the ADDI instructional design model. So you instructional curriculum designers uh, should be familiar with this. It's a primary model for instructional design. Uh, and there are a lot of instructional de design models out there, but they all contain the basic steps of analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation that you see here on screen. Uh, this is a model that has been the foundation of instructional design and creating learning solutions for the past 75 years. As we consider the serious game space in the Learning Technologies Master of Science program, and I'm just going to refer to that as LTMS the rest of the session, so I don't uh, have to, to say that uh, the full um, program name. Uh, as we uh, consider the serious game space in the LTMS program, the primary challenge faced by instructional designers is transitioning from this model to methodologies and strategies that are more conducive to a learner-focused and performance-focused uh, experience. And that's not to say that there aren't good experiences that have been created uh, and even good serious game design experiences that have been created using the ADDI model, um, as well as other instructional design models. Uh, 
uh, the instructional design model is just a tool or a framework in the hands of highly experienced designers. It doesn't get in the way and it does not dictate a design outcome. However, more often, instructional design models result in the type of experience you see here on screen. This is often referred to as a page turner where learners just click through information screen after information screen until they get to a quiz to test their memory or, on, uh, or to test their memory on previous content. It's not very performance focused, it's not very learner focused, and it doesn't provide a lot, lot of opportunity for practice or trial and error like good serious, uh, uh, good serious games do. So when instructional designers try to transition from traditional instructional design to serious game design, the results are often uh, a traditional page turner with game elements attached. There usually isn't a lot of integration of game techniques and those that are added are usually rudimentary. For example, the goal in story is to move a character along a path by answering multiple choice questions or some sort of um, you know, version of a quiz or an assessment, uh, a traditional quiz or assessment that's based on the content that is previously presented. So still very linear and, and often didactic. Um, this is versus a serious game that puts the learner in the middle of a problem or a challenge and lets the learner decide what tools and resources to use to achieve the goal. And I'm certainly um, talking in generalities here, and I'm talking from the perspective of students that are starting in a Master of Science program or inexperienced instructional designers. So there's certainly degrees of um, outcomes in uh, using the ADDIE process and tr transitioning from ADDIE to serious games, but in general, and I think for the majority of folks and, and people that I have, uh, projects that I have seen and people that I have talked with, that transition is, is, is difficult. Here is another version of the page turner. Uh, this time there's an activity that breaks up the information presentation, and this is good, but it's often a content-specific activity that is more about user interaction with the screen through a click and drag activity than it is about mentally engaging the learner. And uh, again, kind of uh, uh, a step towards serious games, but, but not necessarily um, with the focus that, that needs to be um, or the intended focus of, of what uh, serious games really focus on and um, provide outcomes for. So any of these scenarios often result in linear didactic learning experiences where assessment is disconnected from the learning. Again, as you see here, information and quiz at the end or activity kind of centered, but it's not all integrated together as it is in a game environment. Uh, in a serious game, the assessment, feedback, and learning is the gameplay. So what we're focused on here um, in the LTMS program is developing foundational instructional design skills, especially in the area of analysis, and then extending those skills with a serious game design curriculum that focus on, focuses on creating a true game experience for learners as part of training, performance improvement, and behavior change activities in education or, or business. So again, things I've described uh, and what you see on the screen here are, are you know, are obviously game mechanics is a, is a big bucket and some of the more um, primary elements of game design and game experiences. What I've described um, when there isn't a specific serious uh, game design curriculum or at least competencies identified, um, instructional designers have traditionally been challenged to move from a tr traditional instructional design role to a serious game design role. Another and probably the biggest challenge that instructional designers face is finding a balance between fun and learning. Uh, most serious games created by instructional designers have traditionally been either too game, they're too much fun, it's just um, bells and whistles, or they're too serious. It's, there's not enough game elements. Again, it's kind of a, um, uh, a, a well-developed or um, produced multiple choice quiz for, for uh, lack of a better example. And so that certainly has evolved over the past three to five years. But again, as um, people who are in traditional instructional design roles in education and in business, um, that is a, a challenge that, that is still faced. Uh, this is a diagram of flow theory, um, which I think most, based on what you described, most of the folks on the, on the uh, session today probably have a, 
little bit of sense of, so I'm not going to describe this too in depth here, but uh, flow theory is a focus on creating optimal experiences and uh, has a lot to do with, with game balance uh, and essentially focusing on whether an experience, creating an optimal experience that is neither too difficult uh, nor too easy. In the flow channel, a good game or learning experience fluctuates between almost being too hard and almost being too easy. This fluctuation allows the learner or player to build confidence, take mental breaks, and use existing or newly developed skills to tackle new or divergent problems or challenges. So in learning design, similar to scaffolding, the zone of proximal development, or cycles of, uh, of expertise, uh, and certainly also equates to levels in game design. So as we think about um, transitioning from instructional design to serious game design or augmenting those instructional design skills with serious game design skills, um, this, is, uh, this diagram represents what that skill set might look like, and we'll, I'll talk about these, um, these items specifically. Uh, so we've talked a little bit about the challenges to the transition, and uh, again, that's been based off of the traditional skills and perspective of the instructional designer. And so now we're going to look at um, those specific skills that need uh, to be developed to be a serious game producer, designer, or developer. And again, that's from our perspective here in, in how we're looking at um, developing competencies in, in serious game design and development. And the skill set down into four categories that you can read on screen yourself here. Um, content theory, game design, game development. Uh, this is based, uh, and this is actually based off of work done at the Games for Entertainment and Learning Lab at Michigan State University. They have a diagram that kind of um, shows or demonstrates the world of uh, serious game design and some of the things to consider as part of that. Uh, all of these elements are explored within the LTMS Serious Games and Simulations curriculum. And uh, see, we have some new uh, folks on the call. Uh, or on the on the session, so we'd love to hear in the text chat uh, what your roles are, how you're uh, working with serious games, or or um, if you're not, just what your role is uh, related to education or training. And uh, since you are new on the session as well, I'll um, describe again when I refer to LTMS, that's the Learning Technologies Master of Science program. So again, all of these elements are explored within the LTMS Serious Games and Simulations curriculum. So let's take a closer look at uh, all of these. And as I do, uh, would love to see in the text chat uh, any of your thoughts on any additional um, competencies or concepts that could be included in these categories. And certainly what I'll display is an all-inclusive, um, but more of a summary, but would love to get your, your thoughts on, the, on these as well. So when we think about content within the context of serious game design and development, really looking at being able to analyze gaps in performance or behavior and identify opportunities where serious games can be a solution. Uh, we are looking at, uh, again, developing a skill set where the game isn't always the solution to the training and performance issue. So, um, you know, students need to be able in a lot of environments uh, to determine really where the gap is and what solutions fit best. In some cases, Serious games uh, are, are that solution, or a serious game is that solution, and others it may not be. Uh, and you need to be able to identify problems from content and um, identify problems in context that can be explored as part of game design and the learner experience. So, this is again something different from a lot of um, traditional instructional design approaches um, where often the content itself is unfortunately the focus of a lot of initial design um, analysis and structuring versus identifying problems and challenges that that learners are having um, related to the content so that that so that that content can be put into per sec, uh, perspective uh, it's also important to be able to analyze the audience and focus on the audience for the game as part of the design process so um, you know obviously all of these pieces work together and flow um, together but um, the you know content piece is really again kind of what's um, and, and we'll next take a look at theory is kind of what's going to be driving um, the game design process. And I actually have a uh, an example of this from a game that we designed here. Um, we actually were we worked through our Center for Advanced Entertainment and Learning Technologies to design a game for a um, a uh, healthcare system. And so the healthcare system focus was getting 
um, enrollees who were paying for their own insurance to engage a little bit more in their insurance and also um, to engage in their new healthcare portal site, which had a lot of self-evaluation and preventative care uh, information and activities on the site. So um, really our first focus in that game design was on audience analysis. And we had a team of, of people that were working together, one of them more traditional entertainment game designer. And uh, his, his first approach, um, as we talked a little bit later, was really a bit more on the specific goals and you know the specific content and goals of objectives of the of of the the game uh, versus thinking about the audience and how they might react to the game theme or the game strategies. And so we ended up coming up for that group of 20 to age group of 20 to 35 uh, ended up coming up with a reality TV show game theme that really drove the rest of the game design and connected very well with that audience. So that audience analysis uh, is a big part of that uh, content phase, again, which drives other aspects. And then finally, working with subject matter experts to determine targeted performance uh, behaviors and skills is an important part of a serious game designer's um, uh, skill set. So again, would love to see any of your comments or thoughts in the text chat regarding some of those skills uh, in the content area of uh, the serious game design skill sets. And there are a lot more there, obviously, um, but those are a few of the um, most important ones and, and higher level ones, and, and again, a summary of some of the things to consider. So serious game design also consists of understanding theory, uh, learning theory, as well as game design strategies. And so uh, this includes an understanding of what creates a good learning experience. And oftentimes that is a blend of solutions uh, and experiences that lead to performance change and not just one uh, activity or solution. So uh, oftentimes, you know, the serious game might be the primary element or primary experience, but also thinking about how um, the skills developed in that game then are connected to and transition into actual performance in the workforce through other types of learning activities is also an important part of uh, serious game design. What makes games great is that they are inherently good learning experiences, um, but there are learning theories that can be um, more purposefully integrated into serious game design and can expand upon the inherent learning in games. So a focus on learning theories and instructional strategies uh, I think is also important uh, to serious game design beyond just the game theory and game uh, design strategy focus. Any questions or comments about that? Uh, category of uh, serious game skill sets. Again, you can type those in the in the text chat. Okay, great. I'll we'll uh we'll move on then. And then obviously game design in a serious game um, curriculum is very important. And really what we're talking about here is knowing the process of game design and what should be considered as part of that process. Uh, and then as part of that, creating a serious game uh, design document uh, that focuses on uh, the learning outcomes and the game design elements that are gonna help to support those learning outcomes and, and result in performance and behavior change um, that, then, um, that then leads into um, you know, game development or game production uh, from the standpoint of um, you know, making that design come to life as well. So that game design process is kind of a combination of the of the the, the content um, design, structuring, and um, learning and game theory, uh, and really creating that into a, um, a you know a, a process of game using a process of game design that results in that game design document that really establishes very concrete um, strategies for achieving those learning goals and performance goals. Avi, that's a really good question. I probably put project management into game development, but it really, I mean, project management really encompasses all of the, the you know, it's probably an overarching skill set. Um, as you see our, as I'll show our curriculum a little bit later, um, we don't focus specifically on um, project management in the curriculum from the standpoint of a specific course, uh, but it is certainly integrated throughout the courses. And it is a, is, is a very important role, especially again, if, if someone's gonna be a producer uh, a serious game producer. So that's a really good question. Thanks for, for offering that. 
and I'd love to hear your thoughts on my response to that as well. <laughs> um, that's our again our perspective. And then finally, um, game development, which is really more production. So that includes you know um, production management, um, a lot of project management elements, um, and really a focus on the creation and managing that creation process. So this includes graphic design, again those production project management skills, as well as working with uh, technology. So that is our um, kind of perspective on the serious game skill set and uh, some of the primary elements within that broader you know, skill set. And again, you'll see these and I'll highlight these as we look at the specific curriculum. So as we think about the LTMS program and the serious games and simulations concentration, uh, I probably would, and I'll, um, you know, talk about this in a little bit more depth, but um, uh, want to think about it from the standpoint that um, we provide a curriculum for serious game designers, uh, but the focus of the program is also on job outcomes, uh, which uh, we think is very important. So our graduates may not end up at a serious game production company or even an organization that is currently using serious games, you know, even our students in serious um, games and simulations in that concentration may not end up in organizations that are uh, doing serious games currently. Uh, so we focus on them being well-rounded in instructional design, multimedia development, and serious game design so that the opportunities available to them are, are vast. And honestly, there aren't a ton of opportunities in serious game design or production compared to the number of opportunities for instructional designers. And again, I think that's changing, evolving, and as that does, we will need to, you know, rethink our, our program and our design uh, a little bit more. And we certainly are trying to do that uh, all the time and at the very least on a, a yearly basis. So as we think about the curriculum, I probably would put our, our graduates uh, and students in the serious games and simulations concentration curriculum kind of in the middle between instructional design and serious game, uh, serious game designer or um, producer. And you'll, you'll, um, see some of that uh, as we uh, move forward. So now let's take a look at the uh, at the curriculum. And again, would love to um, get your perspective and your questions on any of these um, courses. I'll describe them a little bit, uh, and then certainly would love some dialogue uh, in the text chat on, uh, again, questions and comments. Uh, so. What we're looking at here, um, or what we'll look at in the, two, the next two screens, is the is the uh, serious game design curriculum. This is the core curriculum for all LTMS students. So we also have concentrations in instructional technology specialist, instructional design, and instructional development, in addition to the concentration in serious games and simulations. Uh, you'll see the serious game skills that are addressed in the um, in the core in each course at the far right in in the far right column. These notes uh, relate back to the previous review of content theory, game design, and game development. So I'm indicating for each course which element of that serious game um, design skill set is, is being addressed in that. Uh, for those of you um, that have been through, are in, or teach in instructional design and instructional technology programs, uh, these are the course. These courses, or most of these courses, are probably already part of the curriculum uh, for anyone in computer science or game development. Uh, some of these courses, like the ones highlighted in yellow, are ones that address the serious side of serious games and probably are not a part of uh, of the curriculum at this time. Uh, one course I would like to point out that I think is is really important. Uh, again, based on kind of the the, the broad perspective that we like to develop in students is the Learning Technologies and Solutions course. Uh, I think, and that's the course down here at the at the bottom. I think the Learning Technologies and Solutions course is an important course for serious game designers to have. Uh, more and more serious games are transmedia experiences, uh, especially in a business in a business environment. It's not only about sitting at your desktop to play or playing a game through a mobile app. The game experience can span multiple media and multiple events or experiences. Uh, so it's important to know all of the technologies that can be part of a game experience and influence the game design. Uh, when we look at uh, the concentration in serious games, you'll see a, a focus on a more traditional um, development environment or technology environment. Uh, but And that's important, obviously, but I think it's also important to have a, a good understanding of the variety of 
uh, instructional technology and technology experiences out there that can either um, be um, part of a game experience, a serious game experience, or support a serious game experience. Uh, that Learning and Technologies and Solutions course is a survey course that explores about 12 different categories of learning technologies. And this past semester, I taught the course in a multiplayer classroom format. So the course was designed as a game, and that is just another way for the students to be exposed to serious game design concepts and strategies. Um, again, this is the core curriculum, so that was, those were students not only in the uh, serious games and simulations concentrations, but students in all of our um, concentrations. Are there any courses uh, here that you have questions about or would like me to describe in more, in more depth? I'll give folks a moment to uh, yeah, this is lag time. in on that. Was there, was there a comment? Oh, I guess no, not. Saying, just a lag time, Andy, before the questions come in. Oh, sure, yep. All right, and I can always go back um, to the screen if you do have um, a question that you're uh, that you're typing in um, or a comment regarding one of the courses that you'd like a little bit more explanation of. So um, I'll look for those and then I'll, I'll move on to the, to the next slide in the meantime. Okay, and I know a lot of our attendees are um, from an instructional design or curriculum design background. So again, those courses um, probably look very familiar. So in addition to the core, um, the students also um, take the serious games concentration, serious games and simulations concentration. And these are the courses in that uh, concentration. Uh, again, you'll see the serious game skills that are addressed in the course in the far right column. So again, going back to our um, kind of quadrant of serious game um, design skill set and some of the you know things that we looked at in more detail regarding that overarching skill set, um, the broader skill set is identified here for each course. Um, in addition to the skills noted, uh, students are getting feedback on game design in almost all of the courses as well. So even though it's not a game design course, uh, they are creating a game product or something that's going to support a game in each of the courses. And so they're getting feedback from a game design perspective uh, in, that, um, in that sense. So the game design feedback is part of the feedback they're getting uh, when they're developing with technology uh, in these courses. So for the instructional design, instructional technology programs, these courses are most like, likely not part of the curriculum. Uh, and then for computer science or game development programs, some of these courses will probably look familiar or um, at least the content of the courses will be similar to courses in those, in those programs uh, for the most part. The Designing Serious Games and Simulations course is where students create a design document for, for a game. Uh, each student creates their own design document. Uh, but this past year, we also had students, in addition to creating their own design document, we had them work with IBM to integrate a whole class design document activity that produced a design document for IBM. So this was a way for us to, um, as part of the course, actually step through creating a design document as a group and having a real client to do that for uh, as um, preparation for students creating their own game design document for their own uh, serious game. In the 3D modeling and design course, students get experience with 3D Studio Max. Uh, students build web development and game projects with JavaScript, XML, and ActionScript in the Extensible Languages for Development course. Uh, the course is focused on creating a foundation for object-oriented programming or object-oriented scripting. Uh, students focus on the production process and developing a game in Flash in the Developing Serious Games and Simulations course. So that's the, the one, um, two up from the bottom here. Um, we still use Flash as a development tool because it still is a tool um, that's in use throughout corporate learning environments. And again, we're not necessarily focused on students that are going to entertainment game studios in, in this curriculum or, uh, again, even ones that are going to um, you know, serious game design studios, which there are, are, you know, again, not a whole lot of those compared to businesses um, that are using multimedia development tools, e-learning authoring tools, and then beginning to transition into um, serious games. Uh, so that, that's, uh, we're, we're still using Flash in, in that course. And plus, it's a good 
um, again, kind of object-oriented, um, timeline-based, um, scripting-based um, environment for students get to, to get used to that type of environment. And then finally, um, students work with Unity 3D and or OpenSim to create an interactive virtual world experience in the Development for Virtual Worlds course. And again, you can see some of the um, specific serious game design skills that are being addressed in each of those courses, as well as, you know, in the middle column there, um, the skill set overall that's, that's addressed in, uh, in the course or the, at least the essential question of what is answered or the essential skill set in, in that course. All right, again, if there are any courses that uh, you want me to describe a little bit more in depth, I can do that. And I'll look for your text chat to indicate which one you might want to learn a little bit more about. Or if you have specific questions, again, would love to see those in the, uh, in the text chat. I'll actually go back while you're um, Typing those, I'll go back and show the initial core curriculum and show you that, as well as go back um, to the concentration curriculum and look at uh, those specific courses. And finally, all graduate students at Harrisburg University must also complete six credits of experiential work. So what you're seeing here is something that is across all of the graduate programs. Uh, those three credits consist of a research methodology and academic writing course, and then the student has a choice of three uh, credits in either a project, an internship, or a thesis. For serious game design students, uh, serious game and simulation design students, this gives them an opportunity to research a specific area of game design and, ex and then extend that research in the thesis or get additional game design and development experience through a project or internship. Uh, one of the students did a prototype project that focused on attention and, re uh, and uh, focused on an attention and relaxa relaxation game for head trauma recovery. Uh, the game used a neural headset device to input data into a serious game in Unity 3D. The neural headset measured concentration and meditation levels that are input into the game, where depending on the challenge, the player must achieve a certain level of concentration or relaxation to beat the challenge of the game. And again, that was a, that was a game prototype, so really um, only about a level or half a level of that game was produced, but that's an example of the type of thing um, that students are creating as a result of, of the curriculum and again this experiential capstone. So really a focus on um, throughout uh, hands-on, very practical focus on serious game and design, um, uh, serious game and simulation design and development and then uh, in each course some sort of product uh, that the students are creating and again we often try to tie that to industry um, through a group project or through industry feedback as we can. And then finally, in the experiential component, a way for students to really um, you know, gain more practice and expertise and feedback, but do that in a, in a much um, larger scale. And again, either connected to um, some, some research, connected to a industry sponsor for the project uh, or uh, through actually working with uh, someone in, in business or serious game production uh, as, a, as an intern for that experiential capstone. So that is uh, kind of an overview of the thinking around uh, the transition from instructional design to serious game design and how uh, the curriculum um, you know, was developed to kind of address that transition and also the specific elements of the curriculum. Uh, so I'd love to get your feedback on what you think, uh, you know, what you think is missing and what is there that uh, that's on target. I have some notes on things that are that are missing if uh, if you guys don't have any feedback. So I got your back but would love to get your, uh, your insight as well.
Okay, I don't see any comments or questions coming in, but um, certainly we'll address those as they do. Um, so as I look at other uh, serious game curriculums, and there, there aren't many that are a concentration or a degree, there are many specializations um, and, you know, a few um, courses that are options um, within programs. Uh, I, there are a few things that, that are, so looking at those as well, so really looking at the whole world of um, serious games and uh, the curriculum that is out there, whether it's, again, a, a larger curriculum strictly focused on serious games or whether there are serious game courses that are part of a, um, you know, a game design, a, a more entertainment game design curriculum or uh, an instructional design curriculum. These are some of the things that I, that I see missing from our program. Um, we don't focus specifically on sound or sound design, uh, and that's a very important element of, uh, of games and serious games as well. And uh, the reason, you know, we don't do that is we really feel that, you know, that's something that takes, um, that's, that's an expertise. And again, we are really working with um, developing students who um, are in that production or game design role and certainly understand the importance of um, of sound design and audio in these experiences, but aren't necessarily in the nuances uh, of that. And so um, we don't focus on that specifically in a course. Now you do see that in um, the media selection design and production course, students get experience with game design. There's a segment of, or I'm sorry, students get experience with audio design and creation and editing. Um, also, actually, in the Learning Technologies and Solutions course, they also get experience with that. In the Designing Serious Games and Simulations course, there is a segment of the course that is focused specifically on sound in game environments, um, but we don't, uh, you know, have courses specifically in sound design. And um, Avi, that's a great, um, a great um, question or, or comment or observation regarding uh, ADA compliance. Again, we don't have a specific course in that, um, but actually in the e-learning development course, um, accessibility and 508 compliance are a component of that course. Uh, in learning technologies and solutions, accessibility is a component of that course. Uh, and then in the um, developing serious games and simulations, that is a, an, a component of that course as well. Probably not as big as in the other courses, but it definitely is addressed. Uh, it's not an easy answer or an easy solution for uh, for game design or really any highly interactive um, environment, but uh, certainly something that needs to be considered uh, from the standpoint, at the very least, of accommodations in addition to how to incorporate um, accessibility and 508 compliance elements into, you know, into the games themselves uh, and into the game experience. So that's a great observation. Um, we do, so Alexandra, thank you for that question. Um, we do in the extensible languages for development course. So, you know, there's a, um, the, co the, the course overall, each of the um, languages that are uh, explored in that course uh, are viewed from the standpoint of responsive design. And so really that is addressing all, um, uh, all consumption environments. So, you know, desktop, tablets, um, phone. And so that really, that course specifically, and then in the designing serious games and simulations, we, we really more um, explore the variety of platforms that are, that are out there or that could be game design platforms, but how to actually design and how to actually, you know, think about the differences in those different platforms is in that extensible languages for development course. So Mark, I definitely am seeing that uh, from my perspective, and I'm not a, um, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a generalist, so I keep my, you know, my fingers and toes, which it seems like sometimes there's 40 of them versus um, 10 of each uh, in a little bit of everything. So my sense of HTML5 is that um, companies are moving in that direction, but it doesn't really address all of the needs of the e-learning um, development environment and, um, that it also, for a lot of organizations, is a uh, an element of having to gradually move in that direction because so much of the content over the past 10 years has been more um, flash-based. So things that they're editing or things that are, um, you know, um, 
maybe offshoots of existing programs are built in Flash and it really there isn't um, you know a cost or an ROI to moving those to HTML5 right now HTML5 right now in addition to um, you know the fact that that's going to limit some of the functionality of those programs there are a lot of authoring tools that are now uh, enabling export or publication or, or um, rendering to HTML5 again you have to know as part of that what works in HTML5 um, that you know um, versus what works natively in the um, uh, you know, in the application. So, um, Captivate is an example of one of those e-learning tools that now um, exports or renders to HTML5. But there are some limitations as to what you know. You can't do everything. Um, you can't just do anything you want to do in Captivate and then export it and expect that it's going to render uh, flawlessly to HTML5. And then the other part of that um, um, scenario in a corp, again, a, probably more of a corporate learning environment, is the skill set of the staff. So you know, getting um, instructional designers or folks who really don't have a programming background skilled up in Flash is a huge investment. And to get them to transition or, or even Flash-based products like Captivate or others that export to Flash or SWF, to get them upskilled in a new um, language that is very, um, you know, there aren't a lot of WYSIWYG tools for, so there aren't a lot of visual development tools for, um, is again, extremely costly as well as um, just a whole culture thing around um, asking people to com almost completely change their skill set to some extent. So I think you know the movement to HTML5 is much slower in the e-learning, corporate learning environment than it is in the web, um, the web development environment. But it is happening, and so um, and actually as part of that, in the extensible languages for development course, students do get you know. The JavaScript and CSS work in that course is is you know essentially HTML5, and there's a big um, there's a lot of discussion about HTML5 versus um, something that is more you know that is contained self-contained like an SWF file, and some of the benefits and um, you know disadvantages of that. Um, another element that is not specifically addressed is uh, user interface design or, or usability. Uh, again, we don't have a specific course, but um, in the media selection design and production course that is addressed, in the e-learning development course that is addressed, and um, in the designing serious games and simulations course, um, interface is a part of that um, instruction or that game design uh, serious game design document, um, as well as again when we're talking about um, um, responsive design in the extensible languages course usability and UX is a, is a part of that discussion there, um, but we don't specifically um, focus on that in a in a in in uh, the curriculum design from the standpoint of a specific course on that um, component of serious game design and it's a very important component um, and for all of these things that are that are missing it's really about that there are just so many hours courses and credits that you can include so again we really um, Take the approach of setting a foundation and a you know a broad but very applied skill set, uh, and then students can you know really specialize or focus in in their professional development once they're in a career um, from that point. So we can't cover everything in serious games, and we've decided to give that broader experience that can be applied as, that can be applied as a serious games producer, designer, or developer, but then also give students options in a more general instructional technology field. Um, uh, two more that aren't addressed in our um, curriculum, and I'll, I'll, um, I will uh, also look for some other comments or questions in the text chat. Uh, animation is not a, a course that is um, spe a specific uh, course in the curriculum. Um, we do address it in the media selection, design, and production course. Uh, it's also addressed in the 3D modeling and design course, but that again, that's not 3D animation. That's general modeling and design, uh, import, export, uh, integration into game engines or development environments. Animation is a component of that, but not a um, specific, um, you know, not a specific course. And then finally, the history of games. Um, that, again, you won't really see in the designing games and simulations course and in the learning technologies and solutions course. Um, we do touch on uh, the history of games or games as a medium, but uh, again, our focus is really much more applied from the standpoint of being able to 
design and develop and and the history of of the, the of the space and the history of the craft is important to that but from our perspective not as important and again we have to make room <laughs> somewhere not as important as actually getting hands on and practicing and evaluating serious games and really um, doing that design and development process over and over and over again. So this is the overall graduate structure. So um, this is really kind of what we went through um, overall. And the 15 credits in core uh, we talked about. We also then talked about the serious game uh, and simulation design curriculum. And so this would fit into that elective structure. So the, the concentration uh, is really just a grouping of uh, electives that are very focused in the serious game and simulation skill set. Um, we actually have a very flexible um, elective curriculum as well in that it allows students to really kind of build their own degree. So students can um, take the LTMS program and take the 15 credits in core and then decide to do the series game and uh, simulation concentration or decide to also take electives in any one of our other courses, which can be a little bit more focused in um, analytics. So if you've got a computer programming background and maybe you want to really focus a little bit more, you want to take some of the game design courses, but you want to focus a little bit more in game analytics and learning analytics as part of game design, you can take some analytics courses. Um, if you are focused a little bit more on network engineering and managing um, networks and managing the IT components of serious game design, you can take courses in the information systems engineering and management program. So let's say you have a, um, you know, a um, already have some experience again in either development or design, you can take courses there. Um, you can also take other LTMS electives, or you could take project management electives. So that goes to that project management component. If there is a, a student who um, maybe already has a little bit of background in some of the serious game and simulation area, they can augment that with a project management course as part of the elective um, curriculum and um, build that skill set as part of um, serious games and simulations. Now, doing any of that disqualifies them from receiving the concentration but all that really means is that they won't get a degree in learning technologies with a concentration in serious games and simulations. Um, they will have the opportunity to take, they would just get the learning technologies master's degree. Um, they would have an opportunity to take, again, the serious game and simulation courses that make sense for them and then augment with courses, again, if they already have some experience, then um, augment that with courses that they don't have experience in but can still benefit their serious game and design skill set. So there's a question from Mark here. Um, showed a slide that showed characters and stories key components of the game design. I found that adding a story and characters that are unrelated to the behavior outcomes actually makes a game worse rather than better. Can you comment on that? Definitely I can. And I'll go back to that. And actually my reference to that was was just what you describe is just adding character and story and a goal. Uh, doesn't make it a game and it doesn't make it a serious game and it doesn't make it a good game and it doesn't make it a good learning experience. Um, the you know game design is really the integration of those things around a problem or a challenge that um, you know again is learning focused and performance and behavior focused but is really outside of this um, again traditional and very stereotypical. I don't want to say that all e-learning is like this or that you know all e-learning um, done with the ADDIE model results in this very linear, very didactic, but a lot of it does. And again, especially for inexperienced um, designers. And so when those folks go and move into serious game design, often it is just adding a character, a story, and a goal, and it really doesn't result in a serious game. Um, and again, like you said, um, it can actually get in the way of the learning um, versus supporting it or, or making it a better experience for the, for the learner. Uh, so that's really what this screen was focusing on and what our curriculum focuses on is how to get students from or instructional designers or students or students when they're here um, from this and this to this. I hope that answers your question and certainly if you have any follow-up, I'd be happy to answer that as well or, or any additional comments.
So that is uh, really the perspective that uh, that I wanted to share today. Um, very, you know, from a general kind of transition from instructional design or game development into a serious game um, skill set, and the courses that we've identified uh, that we think uh, can help make that transition, and at the same time, um, really prepare students for a variety of um, job opportunities. And certainly, like I mentioned, as the um, the field evolves and expands uh, and serious game design and development skill sets are much more uh, in demand, uh, we may refocus that uh, a little bit more from, you know, uh, just refocus it a little differently. But for now, um, we feel those are the, the courses that achieve uh, the goals of both a serious game design curriculum and students um, being very marketable uh, at the end of that curriculum. So I'd be happy to take any other comments and questions, and thank you guys for your time today, and certainly uh, the comments and questions throughout as well. Well, thank you very much, Andy. I'm sure that everybody enjoyed getting your perspective, and you've been very generous with sharing your email. And I thank all of you for attending. If you have any other questions, go ahead and type them in. Otherwise, I will be um, ending the conference in a few seconds. And I just wanted, again, to say we're happy to have you join us. Um, Andy has been very generous with his time, and I'm sure that he would welcome any questions that go directly to him. And if any of you have any other questions about our conference, it's at seriousplay.com, seriousplayconference.com, and uh, you can also email me, sbola, B-O-H-L-E, at Serious Games Association. So thank you very much for joining us, and we hope to have you join us again or join us in July at USC at our conference. I think that, that does it, Andy, so thank you very much for your presentation, and um, we will be sending out a link to it if you ever want to listen to it again or see his slides and letting you know about other webinars we'll be having. Thank you very much.